like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot whatever I'm going through whatever I'm being put through whatever I got to go through he has caused me to say it is well it is well with my soul Isaiah, the ninth chapter and the sixth verse, you'll find these words. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace. Let us pray. God, we thank you for another opportunity to come and speak a word to your people on your behalf. Thou who has spoken through the ages, from the ancient times, even until today. Speak now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. When we look at this text here in Isaiah, we realize that Isaiah had been pointing to Jesus even prior to this, the ninth chapter. In chapter 2, verses 2 through 4, Isaiah gave a brief glance of Zion's future universal reign. Then in chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, the prophet gives a view of the king himself. The same view that we find, amen, given when we behold Jesus in the lonely manger. It was the apostle John who said in the 12th chapter, the 41st verse, that these things says Elijah, Isaiah, I'm sorry. These, these things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and he spake of him, bearing witness to what the prophet prophesied about. In chapter 7 and verse 14, the eagle-eyed prophet Isaiah predicted that his birth would be through a virgin. And in chapter 9 here, verses 6, we hear the majestic words of his deity and his eternal throne. The settings for these two visions was the fall of Israel to the Assyrians, prophesied in the two previous chapters, 7 and 8. 2 Kings 15 and 29 tells us that Zebulon and Naphtali, which was the Galilean region, would be the first to fall. But the same region would receive honor in the day in which the king of ages, the Messiah, the redeemer of all humankind, Emmanuel, the son of a virgin, Isaiah began to speak in a prophetic style as if the thing had already happened before the child was even born. Sounds like faith to me. Faith says that although it hasn't happened yet, I am certain that it will. How many of y'all know that you, when you're certain of something that hasn't happened yet, that's where we're going to place our faith? Isaiah was saying that although it hasn't happened yet, that I know it is certainly going to happen. And that's why in our text he says, for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. He had not been given, he had not been born, but Isaiah was certain that it was going to happen. And, and so you got to be certain sometimes in your faith that it's going to happen. It may not be happening for you right now, but you got to say to yourself, it's coming. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's coming. The thing I've been praying for is coming. The thing I've been hoping for is coming. The thing I've been fasting for is coming. It hasn't happened yet, but I know that it's coming with the eyes of faith. Not only by faith, but also by the promises of God. 
Because in Revelation 13 and 8, he said that he was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. In other words, Jesus was to come even before the world's foundation was laid. And so Isaiah goes and he says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And, and so I want to preach today, amen, on this text, on this particular text right here. For unto us a child is born. That the same that is the mighty God is born a child. Amen. He humbled himself and emptied himself so that he might exalt and fill us with all of God's blessings. He was the ancient of days, but he became an infant. Amen. He was the everlasting father and he gave, he gave his son. The everlasting father gave his son. Amen. Now the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Luke 2 and 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a, a, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That he was the Son of God. He was the one to come. He was Emmanuel, God with us. And he came to do us a, a, a kindness because he was born to die. Not because he deserved to die, but because we deserve to die. But in his kindness, he took our place upon the cross and died for our sins. Amen. Can I talk about this thing a minute? I'm not going to be long. And then it says that, and the, and the rest of the text says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. And a counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Now, in Philippians 2 and 19, uh, uh, it says, Therefore God exalted him, amen, to the highest place and gave him a name that was above every name. How many of you know that at the name of Jesus, angels bend and bow? At the name of Jesus, devils shake, shake tremble, and flee. He was given a name that was above every other name. And by his his name we come to know him and by his name we come to worship him amen wonderful is his name i don't care what you call him but wonderful is his name amen he is both god and man he was wonderfully and fearfully made his love is the wonder of the angels he's a wonderful to the saints how is he wonderful to you he's wonderful in his birth how many y'all know he was a wonderful thing to know that a baby was born of a virgin uh, laid in a lonely manger amen how many y'all know that he's wonderful in his life uh, for in his life he took and healed everybody he set some folk free uh, he fed a multitude with two fish and five barley loaves wonderful was his life uh, for his life was filled with compassion and his life was filled with love wonderful is his death because he died on a cross it was a brutal death but it was wonderful for those that believe on him because by his death we were saved we were redeemed through his precious blood wonderful is his resurrection for if he had not been resurrected from the dead then we would be dead in our sins but God raised him on the third day wonderful is his resurrection wonderful is his ascension because one day he's coming back again uh, for a church without a spot or wrinkle. I don't know about you but wonderful is his name. The songwriter said he's altogether wonderful and I want to say it like this all of my life I've never known him to change. He remains the same and wonderful is his name. You can call him whatever you want to. You can call him Emmanuel. You can call him Messiah. You can call him Christ. You can call him Jesus but no matter what you call him wonderful is his name. How I many y'all know that his name is Wonderful? So who do you serve? Wonderful. <laughs> who do you worship? Wonderful. Amen. In other words, since he's so wonderful, you ought to give him some wonderful praise. Say, say amen. You ought to give him a wonderful smile. You ought to give him a wonderful thank you. Wonderful is his name. Say amen. But it also goes on to say his name is Counselor. He's counselor because he's gone with us. He's Emmanuel. And, and, and he brought in the wisdom and the counsel of God. I mean, he's a counselor because he knew the counsel. He sat in the counsels of God. He's, a, he, he's counselor because Jesus is the wisdom of the Father. He's counselor because nobody taught like Jesus. 
Jesus brought the heart of the gospel. He brought the heart of the God's word. Amen. Moses gave them the letter of the law, but Jesus gave them the heart of the law. Amen. Not only is he a counselor, and then sometimes you put those two together. He's a wonderful counselor. <laughs> Amen. Can I talk about it? Amen. But he's also a mighty God. He, he's God, the mighty one. Not only does he have the wisdom of God, but he also has the strength and the power of the Father. He has the strength and the power of the kingdom. I know that he does because he was able to save us. He was able to save you and me with the power. He's able to save us to the utmost and you've got to understand that he if he didn't have the power if he didn't have the strength he wouldn't be able to go through what he went through for us but he's, he has the power and he has the power to say Satan may have some power but God has all power because I heard Jesus when he rose he said I got this thing now he said all power is in my hands in heaven and in earth he has a he's a mighty God He's God the mighty one. Why is he mighty? Not only does he have wisdom, but he also has strength and power. He has, he, he has, he's mighty because he's got a mighty love. How many of y'all know that you ain't been loved until Jesus loves you? Say, say amen. Jesus loved you when you didn't even love yourself. God loved you when you didn't even love yourself. Amen. But God has a mighty love. Amen. And, and, and that, that my, his love is so mighty that it worked on your heart one day and it worked on your mind and you decided that you was going to come up from where you were. You were going to get out of the sin that you were in and you were going to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You was going to get rid of that mess and you was going to clean it up and let God move on your heart and in your life and then until you do you don't have not experienced amen, the mighty love of God. Amen. God's love is mighty. It's so mighty that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. It's so mighty that God so loved the world that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. But then he's everlasting father. Can I talk about it? He's the father of our redemption. Reconciliation was the product of his wisdom. Why is God wise? Because he knew how to get me back to him. <laughs> can, can I talk about it? I didn't know how to get back to him. And you didn't know how to get back to him. But God in his infinite wisdom knew how to get us back to him. Reconciliation was the product of God's wisdom as a counselor. And so the father's love is not just unconditional, but the father's love is everlasting. He is an everlasting father. Amen. Your earthly father, like mine, have gone on. But I got another father. He's an everlasting father. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Can I talk about it? And one day I'm going to see my father because in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, Jesus would not have told us, but he went to prepare a place for us that where the father is, there we might be also. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And here's where I want to be. The Prince of Peace. Turn to your neighbor and say, he is the Prince of Peace. My God. Why is it? That we are seemingly living in a world where there is no peace. Peace is given to those, that, but peace is given to those that believe on the peace that God sent to the world. Now I know God has took Jesus out of the world, but his peace is still here. Anybody that believe on Jesus Christ, amen, the peace that God sent to, into the world will be given peace. How many of y'all know that it matters not that Jesus was crucified? He is still Jehovah Shalom. He is the prince of peace. It ain't Byron Cage. It's Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. He is the prince of peace. A amen. And to obtain peace, we must learn to trust in his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. And until you learn to trust in his goodness, his mercy, and his grace, you will never have the peace of God. That's a passive all understanding. The peace he gave was not the ceasefire of weapons of war. Because Ephesians lets us know for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty towards the pulling down of strongholds. He did not come to stop bombs from flying in air. Amen. Jesus came to give you peace in the midst of your storm. 
How many of y'all know that no matter what you're going through, God can give you peace in the midst of that thing? Amen. Everybody can be acting crazy. Hellhounds knocking on your door. But God can give you peace in the midst of the storm. Amen. No matter what goes on. They say I'm sick in body. Ain't going to recover. But I got peace to know that God is able to do it. God can fix it for me. God can turn it around. God can flip the script. Can I talk about this thing? He'll give you peace. Amen. For he is a peace giver extraordinaire. Amen. And his righteousness, he will bring us a loving, peaceful relationship with the Father, the creator of all humanity. And that's what he come to do. He come to make, give us peace with God. Somebody say, I got to make my peace with God. No, you ain't got to do that. God already made peace. Jesus already made your peace with God. Somebody say, Amen. I got to make my peace with God. I hope he made his peace with God. If he ain't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, or she ain't accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they couldn't possibly have made peace with God. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Hey, man, can I talk about this thing a minute? How do you get somebody to make their peace with God? You get them to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And once they accept Jesus as their personal Savior, they made their peace with God. Hey, man, can I talk about it? They have entered into an, an, an eternal relationship with our Heavenly Father. Now, watch this in Jesus. What does Jesus give you? Jesus will give you peace of mind. Anybody ever had a peace of mind? Your mind was all in turmoil. You didn't know what you were going to do. But the spirit of the Lord came and gave you a peace of mind. Can, can I talk about it? Anybody ever had peace in your heart? Where you felt heartbroken? You felt like you, your life was in turmoil? Amen. But he turned you around and gave you peace in the midst of your heart? God's peace will be with you. And you can come. When God, you got God's peace now. This is a crazy world in which we're living in. Am I right about it? Can anybody agree with that? But we can confidently pray for our world. Amen. But for the peace of our families, we've got to pray for peace in our families. We got to pray for peace in our brothers and sisters in Christ. We got to pray for peace for our neighbors. Amen. And even our enemies facing various threatening situations. We've got to pray for the peace within them. Amen. And let me set the record straight this morning. Jesus is the only peace that you're going to find. Say amen. It comes with knowing the Lord. Tell me where else can you find peace? They can't even find it. Oh, help me somebody. I'm almost done. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's almost done. Say amen. In conclusion, I want to say this. It's Christmas time. A time when we can sing the songs of Silent Night. A time in which we sing, Hark the herald angels sing peace on earth and mercy mild. We sing all the songs about peace on earth. But the reality is that many nations are rising up against each other. The modus operandi of many nations is to destabilize the entire world. I have no doubt that our leaders are compromised and doing the bidding of other foreign nations. No one covets the Nobel Peace Prize anymore. The world peace seems a, a, a thing of the past. And, and, and I would rather have the Cold War than a lukewarm deception, amen, amen, being served to the foolishness of the masses. 1 Timothy 4 and 3 says, for, a time, but for the time will come, this is 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy 4 and 3, for a time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want them to hear. How many of y'all know that's where we are? How many of y'all know that we're in the last days and times? Amen. Amen. I'm going to be I'm going to be apostolic. We're in the last days and time. Amen. And it's winding up. Can I talk about this thing a minute? You, you see a fig tree that just growing figs. You know what time it is. Say amen. When you see all these things happening, earthquakes in diverse places, nations against nations. The, amen. The, let me tell you something. It's not far away. Amen. It's not just taking place in distant lands, though, and in faraway places, but in our communities, in our homes. In, 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 amen. The nights are far from silent and holy. Sometimes you can't even go to sleep at night because so much turmoil is going on. Can I help me, somebody? But during this holiday season, many nights will be filled with danger and they're going to be filled with fear. Amen. But, but for God's people, peace is not only a reality, but peace is the will of God. 
God wants you to be have peace in your life. Amen. Peace is a spiritual gift from God. And we must understand as you hear the songs of the season uh, uh, like peace on earth and mercy mild and, and joy to the world the Lord has come. Amen. We must understand that the second Timothy 2 1 through 3 says I urge then first of all that petitions prayers intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people for the kings and those in our authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodly and holiness this is good and it pleases God the Savior we've got to pray for those for the craziness that's going on in our world and once you so once you go to something and you give it to God you got to let the God the peace of God fall upon you say amen how many of y'all go to work and there's no peace you need to lay hands on a building before you go through the door and speak peace to the building and if the peace ain't in there when you get there let your God's peace return unto you can I talk about it we go through so much because we don't speak peace we're gonna speak it we gotta say Lord let the peace fall upon my house. Let there be peace in my home today. Let there be peace on my job today. Let there be peace in my church today. I need some peace. <laughs> Can I talk about this thing a minute? Because if you don't have any peace, it's your own fault. Because all you gotta do is speak it. If you speak it, God will give it to you. But if you don't speak it, you've got to speak the things, huh? By faith that are as they are not. And the things that are not as they are. Somebody can say, I'm gonna speak peace to my job. I'm gonna speak peace to my financial situation. Because right Right now I'm broke as a joke. I don't have two nickels to rub together to make a quarter. Come on, help me, somebody. Can I talk about this thing a minute? I got so much going on, and Pastor asking us for some money. He's got to be out of his mind. I don't even know how I'm gonna pay my rent. I don't even know how I'm gonna pay my mortgage. Can I talk about this thing a minute? But I'm here to tell you: if you learn to trust and depend in Jesus, He will fix it all for you. He will make it right with you. He'll give you peace. In the midst of your situation, he'll turn your situation around. Come here, Sabrina. Won't he do it? He'll fix it for you. He'll turn it for you. I got peace. Might not got no money, but I got peace. <laughs> I got peace, and because I got peace, I got joy. Can I help it high? Yeah. Am I right about it? Anybody want some peace? Anybody want some peace? Sometimes you just want to tell folks, don't even call my name no more. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Am I right about it? Everybody got drama. Everybody got problems because they don't have no peace. But if they learn to depend, if they learn to trust in Jesus, they can have some peace. And then when they get some peace, they can give you some peace. That'll make it shot right there. That'll make it shot right there. Next time somebody, huh? Next time somebody come to you with all that. Peace. Be still. You need to learn to trust in God. Huh? Am I right about it? I don't know how I'm going. You need to learn to trust in God. Where's your faith in God? Because if you could just lean on your faith, if you could just trust your faith, stand on your faith, then God will give you peace even in the midst of your storm. Come here, disciples. They were out on the Sea of Galilee. Am I right about it? They didn't know that the storm was raging, but that Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. See, he had peace. They the ones that had none, but they went and woke Jesus up. And here's what I want to tell you. If you just go and wake Jesus up in your life, get your word and wake Jesus up. Get on your knees and wake Jesus up. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. God will give you peace. He'll give you rest. You'll be able to sleep at night. That's all I want. That's all I want. Go home, ain't no peace. I'd rather live on the roof because ain't no peace in this house. Can I talk about it? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Turn your neighbor's name. I just need to find some peace. Give me three minutes because Satan's ideal for you is to run you until you get so tired. 
you can't move no more. Then he got you. Say amen. You know, sometimes you don't even have peace enough to transition. As soon as you get home, dinner ready. What? <laughs> Huh? Let me transition. Just let me sit here for 15 minutes and have some peace. Can I get my shoes off? Matter of fact, why don't you come and take my shoes off and rub my feet? Because I've been on my toes all day long. Help me, somebody. I ain't just talking about the women now. I'm talking to men, too. Our feet get tired, too. Say amen. 30 days is a neighbor. Give me some peace. Turn your neighbor and say, peace. You'll have it when you learn to trust in the Prince of Peace. Speak peace. And God will give it to you. He's not somebody that if you ask for a fish, he'll give you a stone. He's a good father. Say, God, send Jesus into this craziness so he can stand up in my life and speak peace and tell the storm to shut up, tell the lightning to blow a fuse so that I can get some peace in here. Help me somebody. Somebody know what I'm talking about. All of y'all that ain't praising him, y'all better watch out. He's waiting to give you hell as soon as you walk through that door. You better go and praise him right now. And when peace like a river when peace, like a river, attended my way. When sorrows, like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm being put through, whatever I got to go through, he has caused me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I need peace. I need peace. Peace. Just a little bit. I'm going to be all right. Just give me five seconds of praise. Give me five seconds. Hallelujah. I got to put a prayer. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for peace. I'm going to pray for peace. Huh? Say amen. I just need some peace. Anybody need some peace? Give God some praise. Give God some praise. I'm going through hell. You don't know what I'm going through. But God is able to give me peace. 